give you a hand. <laughs> oh, don't wait. Walk some. I can't carry you all the way. <laughs> don't drink. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, no. Family camping trips are fun again, now that Hannah can keep up with Diane and me. But not that long ago, five years in fact, Hannah was completely dependent on us for getting around. She was also dependent on us for food, shelter, and protection, as she still is. In this way, the relationship between human parents and children resembles that of animal parents and their young. Like many of the higher mammals, the human infant and its parents form strong mutual bonds. Go like this. Good, Hannah. These two-way ties allow the parent to teach and the child to learn what's necessary for survival and what's required by society. Okay. All this learning is a lengthy process for humans. No other mammal has as long a childhood. And no other mammal must master so many skills and enter such a complex and constantly changing world. Language alone is a monumental task. Two. <laughs> By the age of two, we know nearly 300 words. By the age of three, almost a thousand. How does a child accomplish this and so much more? By drawing on our greatest inborn gift, our capacity to learn from the environment. For the most part, we relate human to human. But by the age of four, we're aware that there are more than humans in the world. There are also animals. Some tame, like dogs and cows and chickens, but some wild. That's a nice girl. Learning how we're similar to and yet different from wild animals is an important part of growing up. By five years of age, we're ready to go out and meet some of these creatures. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear. Some of my most rewarding experiences as a father have come from introducing my daughter to various wild animals. Won't you join me and witness one child's journey of discovery as she uncovers some of nature's secrets? Growing up wild. Shadow. Shadow. Come on. Shadow. For several weeks, I'd hiked and scouted in this area, on, and I'd come across several amazing discoveries that I hope to share with Diane and Hannah. Spring is the season of birth, and with so many wild babies around, 
it's a great time to explore. Uh oh, wait, Hannah, wait a second. Look at this. Don't walk under there. You see this tree? Look, this dead tree is laying on top of this live one. I bet if we knock it off. Oh. Now that tree can grow up big again. Yeah, it'll straighten up. This is the one that just fell over. Careful, because there's some more nettles over here. We head for one of our favorite campsites, a little hill overlooking a meadow where elk cows and calves come to graze. Dad, have you ever had a bubble bath and you put a beard on you? <laughs> I don't need to. I've already got a beard. <laughs> you silly. When you were a kid, did you? Oh, sure. You had a beard when you were a kid. Did not. <laughs> I've always, didn't you know I've always had a beard? I was born with a beard. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. Did you ever see a picture of Daddy with no beard? Yes. <laughs> no. When? No, you. if you saw somebody with no beard, it wasn't me. There's a reason for the annual spring abundance of new life. Young animals benefit from the warming weather and the increasing food supply that summer will soon bring. The spaniel pup, Shadow, is a great companion for Hannah. But I don't recommend that you take a dog into wildlife areas unless you're ready to keep it close by or tied up at all times. Okay, follow me through here. Are you gonna get wet? You're gonna get muddy. And a hand. See where to step? Step on those big bumps of grass. <laughs> you didn't step at all. You hopped. Whoops, more mud, jump. Well, she's having a lot of fun getting all wet and muddy. <laughs> Wait, let me do this. <laughs> what a ballerina. Now, where do you want to go, Shadow? Huh? No, where do you want to go? Right here. most of the day to reach our campsite. So we snuggled down into our sleeping bags early that night, eager to be up with the dawn. See you in the morning, okay? Night, Mom. Night. Night, honey. Night, Mom. See you in the morning. Next morning, Diane stays behind while Hannah and I hike to a rocky area about a half mile from camp. Okay, here, sit down here with me. Sit down right here. Right here. Okay. Okay, I want you to look right over there under that tree. Now, can you, can you see the tree? You can't. Okay, wait. You see that cliff right there? Yeah. Look over by the tree. I don't see anything, Dad. You don't? Well, look again. Do you see what's under the tree? No. Now, let's see.
Now look through here. Now you can see them. Look. Look right here. Look right through here. Now turn front ways. Turn like that. Okay. Don't bump it. Okay, now do you see the tree? You see what's under it? Yeah. What is it? Tigers. No, not tigers. Cougars. Mm. Cougars. Look, it's a mom and her three babies. They're really cute, too. They're just now out of the den. They're very small. I bet you never saw that before. Yeah. Look through. Look through. Several weeks ago, I found a cougar family here. Carrying each kitten gently but securely in her mouth, the mother was moving them, one by one, up to this higher cave. Oh, yeah. Oh, those are cute. Isn't that funny? You see the little babies are spotted. When they grow up, they're not going to be spotted like that. They're only spotted when they're babies. <laughs> the kittens will stay with the female well into their second year. It takes that long to learn what they need to know. Can't get closer to these, but I know something we can get closer to. Come on with me. I wanted to tell Hannah more about the den, how the high rocky overhang kept the cougar babies dry and warm, and how it also allowed the mother to safely hide while surveying the slopes below for prey. But facts could wait till later. The magic of seeing these magnificent wild cats was enough for now. We're going down below and across the valley to visit a very different kind of family. This one lives in an underground den. What those are? Mm -mm. They're baby badgers. Let's sit over here. Be very quiet. Sit down. Can you see that den? That hole? Yeah. That's where they live. That's their house. Their mom's gone. She's off hunting somewhere. They sure are cute and fuzzy, huh? Yeah? Badgers come above ground when about a month old and remain with their mother for only another month or two. Theirs is a much shorter childhood than the cougars. <laughs> uh, can I pick one up? Well, we can't pick up wild animals. You know, sometimes we can get sick if we pick them up, or mm -hmm. and sometimes they get sick if we pick them up. Mm -hmm. So we can't. And you know what? I bet these little baby badgers would bite. You want one to bite you? 
No. I don't think so. Look, they're starting to play. Look at them, they're rolling around. By playing, young animals train for their future survival. This wrestling match strengthens their muscles and sharpens their reflexes for the time when they will hunt on their own. guys, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Well, they might be guys and girls. Maybe it's a boy and a girl. I don't know. We should go home before their mom comes back, okay? Come on, let's take this path right here. Badger babies play as enthusiastically as human children. And like them, need their rest at the end of a long day. That's a pretty song. I love that one so much. You know what we're going to do tomorrow? Yeah. Tomorrow we're going coyote fishing. Why? <laughs> I think about that, huh? It's a surprise. Good night. Night, Mom. Night, Hannah. Night. In spring and summer, coyotes often hunt in the coolness of late afternoon. So we head out then, too. My plan is to arrive at a coyote den I'd found while the parents were away. So far, so good. Where are we going? We're going right over here, and I want you to be quiet, okay? Okay. Be very quiet. Maybe we'll see something fun. You see down in that little hole there? You can? Huh? What do you see? Coyote. You want to try to get one to chew on it? Yeah. To put it way inside. Way inside. And just put the put it right down like this. Of course, we're not really fishing with a hook. The feathers are just tied onto the line. Do they have that thing? Yeah. The feather? Are you biting a feather? Huh? Bite it. We'll call this coyote bait.
you a nut. But they won't come out. Like all predators, the pups are inquisitive and playful, but they are also very cautious. <laughs> he was chewing on the feathers. <laughs> but they don't want to come out, you know why? Because they don't come out when their mom's not here. The mother coyote has to come back, and then she goes, and the babies know that it's her, and that's when they come out. But I don't think they'll come out with us here. It's kind of neat, huh? <laughs> Well, that's it. I think they're tired of playing with it. Mm. Let's go over in the woods, and then if their mother comes back, we can look at her through binoculars. The female comes back and calls her babies out of the den. They wouldn't come out for us, but they do for their mother. <laughs> do you see them, Hannah? Yeah. Hannah gets a close-up view of another means of coyote communication. <laughs> Let me see when he finished. that their mother's back, huh? <laughs> I guess so. Let's go back to camp before it gets dark. Yeah, they need to have some food. Come on. After all we'd seen in the past week, we decide to spend a few days relaxing and resting at the campsite. But just like the young animals she had been watching, Hannah was restless and ready to explore on her own. Thank you. Mmm, those are sweet. Dad, I'm gonna go pick some flowers. Well, just stay right in this area right in here, okay? Okay. And, um, stay right close to us, okay? Don't go down. Don't go down by the creek. Just stay right here where we can just see you, right in this okay. meadow and over there. Okay. Okay, okay Daddy. You stay right over here, okay? Okay. Shut up. You can hold this. Keep her on her leash. Hey, Hannah, you see those orange flowers, those little red orange flowers? They're like honeysuckle. You can pull them off and uh, get a little sweet out of the end of them. Try those. Okay. Stay right here, though, okay? Okay. okay. Yeah, don't go far. It pleases me to see that she wants to get out by herself, for I know that she needs to test the environment. Waiting for her, there is a rich fund of knowledge, things that could never be learned from books. Shadow. Shadow. I want her to enjoy the same freedom that I had as a child, wandering where my instincts led me and discovering the secrets of the natural world.
Did you really see a bear? Shadow. Come here, where at? Where at? Where? Come on, let's go. Over here? This way? What color was it? Black. A black one? Black. How, was it big? Yeah. How big? Bigger than me? Well, that was a Did big you bear. see a bear, Shadow? <laughs> she saw one. I'm sure she did. Oh, Hannah, I'm so glad you're okay. You came right back. Our enormous capacity to learn from the environment is our greatest inborn gift. My greatest joy as a father comes from knowing that my daughter can draw upon this gift as she's growing up wild. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America.